All right, I think I'm gonna make this the last video, which means we're gonna to have to do about four problems in here, plus a definition, so it might run a little bit long, but I figure I should get her done. Hey, if you get through the first problem out of four, you get a little bored, hit pause. Go do something else. Come on back later. All right. Here's our definition. We're gonna start talking about limits. Remember limits from Calc 1? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They haven't, they haven't gone anywhere. Remember doing limits when we did 7.8? Yeah, 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 yeah. Or 8.8, sorry. My bad, different textbook. So the limit of a sequence, if the terms of a sequence, A sub n, approach a unique number L as n increases, that is, if A sub n can be made arbitrary close to L by taking n sufficiently large, then we say the limit as A sub n is equal to L exists, and the sequence converges to L. If the terms of the sequence do not approach a single number as n increases, the sequence has no limit, and the sequence diverges. It's just talking about limits. We've done this. It's just fancy ass numbers. Remember how some limits went to infinity? And some limits went to a number? Yeah. If they go to a number, we say it converges. If it goes to infinity or negative infinity, we say it diverges. Don't make it tougher than that. There's a lot of words in there. We're going to take a limit as n tends towards infinity of our sequence. And if the terms look like they're going towards a number, then hell yeah, let's go. We're going to say it converges. If it looks like it's going to blow up to some other number, no, and there might be something else that where a sequence diverges. Let's go. So here's our first one. Now, before we even start, we have something. Is this an explicit formula or is this a recurrence relation? Now, there's no a sub 1 equals something. There's no a sub n plus 1 equals... It, it's just an explicit formula. This is just a straight explicit formula, which means just plug in the gosh darn numbers. And hey, look, it says we're starting at 1. We're going up to infinity. Now, I'm writing this off to the side. None of this needs to be there. But I'm going to leave it there so we can see it. So we're going to start at 1. So here's our game. I want to see if this thing uh, converges or diverges. And the way we're going to do it is we're just going to write out the first few terms. Let's just write out the first few terms and see, like, and then we're going to make, we're going to make a conjecture about its limit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we're going to plug them in. So we're going to start with one. So up top, you have negative one to the first over one squared plus one comma. All right, negative one to the second over two squared plus one. Negative one to the third over three squared plus one comma. Negative one to the fourth over four squared plus one comma dot dot dot. And it goes on forever. There's our first four terms. Now let's look and see what those gosh darn numbers are and see if maybe something is happening here. The same thing. We're like, well, negative one to the first is just negative one. And one plus one is two. Next, we're going to have positive one over five. And now we're going to have negative one over 10. And positive one over 17, comma, dot, dot, dot. Does that look like it's going towards any number? I mean, we go from negative to positive to negative to positive, but look at the actual numbers. Isn't a fifth smaller than a half? Isn't a tenth smaller than a fifth? And isn't a seventeenth smaller than a tenth? Well, what's happening here? I'm just going to draw it out real fast, and we're going to look and see what, what's occurring. Jump to the side. <laughs> We're going to say that this is, ooh, there we go. This is our n. This is our a sub n. So what we got, like, I'm going to make negative one half here. So we got one, two, three, four. Okay, so we got a point here. And then at two, we get a fifth. So we'll get a little closer. So I'm going to make a big dot on top of it. And then we're going to get negative a tenth. So that's going to be even closer. And then we're going to get 1 over 17. That's going to be even closer. So if you kept playing this pattern, it looks like it's going to get closer and closer and closer to the n intercept. It looks like this sequence is going towards 0. We're just making a conjecture. You could just do it as a limit. You could just do it as a limit and show that it goes to 0. But now let's do the same thing here. Let's check out this one. Now, is this an explicit formula or is this a recurrence relation? 
Well, it's got to be an explicit formula. There's no a sub 0 or a sub 1 or anything like that. So this is an explicit formula, just like problem number 1. So let's write out the first four terms, and let's see if maybe we can't figure something out. So we say this is cosine of 1 times pi, comma, cosine of 2 times pi. Because remember, we're replacing n. n's like our new x. Cosine of 3 times pi, and then cosine of 4 times pi, and then comma, dot, 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 and it goes on forever. I don't want to keep doing this. We can usually catch it in the first few terms. So we have cosine of pi, cosine of 2 pi. Why am I writing all that? I think you can read I think we're good. Cosine of pi is equal to negative 1. Cosine of 2 pi is the same thing as cosine of 0, which is equal to positive 1. Cosine of 3 pi is negative 1, and cosine of 4 pi is positive 1. You keep doing this, it oscillates back and forth between negative 1 and positive 1. And it never approaches a single freaking value. You're to draw this. Negative 1, positive 1, negative 1, positive 1, negative 1, positive 1. So where does it end? Where, does it look like it's heading towards something? Should we choose 0 because it's halfway in between negative 1 and 1? Where it never equals 0? No, it's not going anywhere. It's just oscillating back and forth. Negative 1, positive 1, negative 1, positive 1. So we're going to say, nah, dude, I think this diverges. Because it doesn't go to a single number. Unlike up here, we talked about it and we're like, hey, it looks like this thing's going towards zero. So we'd say that this one converges. It looks like it converges to zero, but I just want to talk about, does it look like it's going towards a number? Does it look like it's blowing up? Or does it look like it's not going freaking anywhere? Right? Yeah. All right. Hanging in there. Okay. Last one for this part, and then we'll switch on to one other piece, and then we'll be done with this session. We'll move into just looking at more sequences. Oh, fun, fun, fun. So is this an explicit formula, or is this a recurrence relation? We look off to the side, and you're like, there's an a sub 1, so good golly, this must be a recurrence relation, knowing the difference. Or as I will probably call it numerous times, a recursive formula. So let's write out our first four terms to figure out what the heck is going on. So we're saying, all right, we're a previous term times negative two is going to be our next one. So our first term is one. It tells us it's right there. One. The second term, it says multiply by negative two. So that's negative two. So the same. And now we take our previous term, negative two, we multiply it by negative two, and that's positive four. Then we do it again and we get negative eight. It looks like it continues on. I don't believe we need to do any more to figure out whether this is going to blow up without bound, increase, decrease, or whether it's going to go to a number. Come on, dude. Come on. Come on, dude. And our a sub n, so we're like one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So our first term is one. Use the color code. Our next one is negative two. Now I'm going to be ridiculous. And our third goes up to four. And then our fourth goes like this, down to negative eight. And then it's going to go like this. I'm just going to zoom out. Does that look like that's going towards a single number? Or does it look like it's blowing up without bound? It is. The magnitudes of the numbers are getting larger. When I talk magnitudes, ignore the sign. 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, 256, 512, 1024. It's getting bigger. Yeah, it's going positive to negative. It's oscillating back and forth. But we're going to say that this diverges, right? That doesn't look like it's going to a single number, does it? Nah. And then let's do our last problem. And again, if you want to look back through any of these problems, I'm stealing them just straight from your textbook. Usually I don't. But for this one, I'm like, come on, man. They already made it up. They already made it up. All right. I want to take a look at something. I want to look at the limit of a sequence. And we're going to have, we're going to have some ways of doing this where you're going to be able to figure out the freaking answer just right away. I'm going to skip through all the nonsense and go like, all right, here's our formula. A sub n is equal to 4n cubed over n cubed plus 1. 
and we're going to do this for all our ends. And oops, I want to write a subscript. Oh, muscle memory. One, two, three, four. So we're saying we're not going to start at zero. We're going to start at one. So we're going to look over on the right for any of those ends. We'll tell you where to start. Because it doesn't matter whether you start at the zero with term or you start at one. All right. Well, hmm. I just want to plug in some numbers and see what we get. All right. Let's plug in the first four or five or something terms. So we're just going to plug in one. So we have. One times four times one cubed over one cubed plus one. Four times two cubed over two cubed plus one. Right? Just replacing our ends with a one or a two or a oh dare I say now a three. And then we'd have a four times four cubed all over four cubed plus one time. Da, da, da. It's gonna go on and 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 on, and on forever. You punch that thing in, you get 4 over 2, it starts off at 2. And then you have 2 cubed is 8. 8 times 4 is 32, so we're going to get 32 over uh, 9. And this is approximately 3.556. Next one we're going to have 3 cubed is 27. 27 times 4 is 108. And 27... Plus one is 28, and this turns out to be 3.857. And then we're going to get another number here. The numbers are getting too large. I'm just going to write in this approximately 3.938. And if you were to keep playing this game with a calculator and you punch it in, does it look like it's going anywhere? Does it look like it's getting closer to a number? Does it look like it's blowing up? And I'm just writing in the approximate. Wow, that's pretty close to it. Number. Any, any guesses on what number this might go to? Or do you want me to just keep writing down approximations? You, come on. I, I think you can see. Where does it look like it's going? It's going to four. It's freaking going to four. You see it? Now let's skip through the nonsense. A sub n is equal to 4n cubed over n cubed plus 1. Take the limit as n goes to infinity. If you want to know where it's going to end up, go limit as n goes to infinity of 4n cubed over n cubed plus 1. And then treat n as if it's a continuous variable. Just run and see what it is. If you were in my Calc 1 class, I would talk to you that like, hey, no more. You just state the answer. What's the degree of the top? Three. What's the degree of the bottom? Three. Do you think that plus 1 matters in the bottom when we're going to infinity? If you had a, if you were a billionaire, would you care that there was a one dollar bill sitting in front of you? No, because it makes no freaking difference in the grand scheme of things. This is going to four. Or we could be like, hey, lopey talls. I have an infinity over an infinity case, and I don't like thinking, so I'll just do lopey talls instead of stating the answer is four. So we're like, oh, whatever, let's do lopey talls. Goes to infinity, you take that derivative up top, what's that, 12n squared? And then down below, we'll take a derivative on n cubed plus 1, and we're going to get 3n squared. And then the n squares just cancel out, and you get 12 over 3, and it's still just freaking 4. That's how we're going to find these things. That's where we're going to go. We don't want to write all this nonsense out. Why would you do this? Having to bust out a calculator to figure that out? No, thank you. No, thank you. We're just going to use limits to figure out where the heck it's going to go. So that's a little prior to, but we're moving into our next section. All right, I've been babbling for 14 minutes. You're probably sick and tired of my voice. Well, shit, you're probably sick and tired of my voice a long time ago, but yeah. All right, I'll shut up. See you.